Hello, this is Domenico Composto, and we're going to continue with Theory of the Firm on um, another scenario with perfectly competitive market structures. And we're going to illustrate a, uh, a real-world example or apply, apply a real-world example to our model. So here we have the uh, global market for oil or petroleum uh, for this year or for the last 12 months, and we can see that in February to March, there was a sudden drop in the price of oil. It was trading at $53 a barrel, and then it completely collapsed to $16, $17 a barrel. So this model is gonna illustrate um, how and why that happened. And then we'll also see how and why the price rebound, rebounded to about $35 a barrel. So this is a you know good theoretical model, again, to understand primary commodity markets like the petroleum industry and and to understand the volatility of the price why it's so volatile and also to understand that even if prices collapse we know as economists that it will not be um, over the long run that it will rebound or if prices certainly jump we also know that it won't be sustainable that it will eventually come back down again so um, here we have our uh, two graphs to illustrate perfect competition we'll just make some notes at the top that we're going to be looking at scenario number two for perfect competition and we're going to be looking at a firm going from normal profit to to a loss in this case back to normal profit in the long run and this is going to be driven by a fall in demand or global demand so a decrease in global demand will lead to the loss for firms and that will lead to a decrease in global supply which will cause the price to rebound so that's what we're going to be illustrating in this scenario and we want to make a note that we're looking at the market or the global market For petroleum okay so we have the industry and we have the individual firm the individual uh, firm that is extracting petroleum from the earth on both the axes we'll be measuring quantity on the X axis and for the industry, we're going to be looking at price of petroleum. And for the firm, we'll be looking at price, the costs of production for the oil extractor, and also their revenue. Okay. So the industry, we will have an upward sloping supply curve according to the law of supply. That's the global supply for petroleum. And then we'll have the global demand for petroleum downward sloping according to the law of demand. And that sets an equilibrium. We'll give that the color red, point A. And at point A, we see that the quantity supplied um, and demanded is at Q1. Quantity supplied equals quantity demanded at Q1. And that sets a global price for petroleum at P1. So in that chart I showed you, it was roughly, let's say, $40 a barrel. That becomes the price that the individual oil extractors must accept. Uh, these firms are price takers. The, what they're producing is a, a homogenous product, no different from any other oil producer. Um, and so they can't really differentiate their oil from another. So they're gonna have to accept the price that's set by the global industry for petroleum. Price is equal to the average revenue that the firm is uh, making, which is equal to the marginal revenue. And since average revenue is demand, we'll also make a note that demand is equal to our marginal benefit. Then we have the supply curve for the firm. It has this kind of J shape, this backwards J shape, according, uh, as a result of the law of diminishing marginal returns. And the supply curve is equal to our marginal cost curve for the firm. In addition, we'll add the average total cost 
All right, it intersects with the MC curve at its lowest point. So here is the average total costs for the individual firm. And so the firm here is producing at this point, I'll call that point A. And again, we're assuming profit maximization, which follows the rule that the firm will produce where MR equals MC. So here's MR, here's MC. They intersect at point A. That's where the firm will reach the uh, maximum amount of profit. And that sets quantity at that price at Q1, the quantity supplied by the individual oil extracting firm at Q1. Now, what happened? Um, when we looked at that information for the last year, that there was a sudden drop in the price of petroleum that occurred in February, March. This is the year 2020, and this is uh, COVID. COVID, the pandemic, is beginning to impact developed nations, developing nations, and governments are quickly mandating that people stay home. Uh, as a result of people being locked down and locked in their homes, they're no longer able to go out and drive their cars to work. And so the demand, the global demand for petroleum begins to decrease. So we notice in the industry, the global demand for petroleum decreases as a result of the mandated lockdown. So demand decreases from D1 to D2. D2 equals S1 um, at point B, setting a new quantity supply and demanded at Q2 and reducing the price for petroleum to P2. And we'll notice that in that chart, the price collapsed to about $16, $17 a barrel. So that becomes the perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. So price falls for the firm from P1 to P2, which is equal to AR2, which is equal to MR2, equal to demand to equal to marginal benefit to. So price falls and the individual oil extracting firm will now decrease the quantity of supply along their supply curve. And in that process, they'll probably be firing excess resources like labor, perhaps some land or capital, and they will decrease the quantity supplied to produce at point B. We see the decrease in the quantity supply from Q1 to Q2. So at this point, what do we notice? Uh, let's see, I'll choose this color. Um, the firm is producing at point B where marginal revenue equals marginal cost to profit maximize. But at point B, their average revenue is less than their average total costs. So here are their average total costs. I'll call that um, C2 is equal to average total cost two. And since average total costs here are greater than the average revenue uh, at this point, the firm is generating a significant loss, okay? So this area, this rectangle, is the loss incurred by the firm as a result of producing at that lower price. Even though they've tried to re reduce their cost by uh, firing some resources, they're still generating a loss um, at point B. Okay. So uh, what happens? We have some firms generating a loss, right? And they're going to try to reduce their average total cost by firing labor and so forth. Here we're assuming that we're in the long run, that costs are at the lowest that they can be. So some firms are going to have to shut down and exit this market structure. So as firms begin to shut down and exit this, mac, uh, this market structure, which we've seen, if you check the news from February, March, April, May, June, July, you'll see a number of um, oil refining companies that drill for oil in the ocean um, and perhaps other oil extracting firms in the United States, in the U.S., uh, going into bankruptcy, declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So that reduces the global supply of petroleum as these firms go into sh uh, begin to shut down and declare bankruptcy. So supply decreases from S1 to S2. Okay, so we're going from A to B, and now we see that we have returned um, to uh, the previous price of P1 at point C. So where S2 equals D2, 
we have a further decrease in the quantity supply and demand to Q3. But because of the reduction in supply, the price has increased to P1. And in that chart, again, we saw that although price fell to $17 a barrel, it did go up to about $30, $35, eventually climbing to $40 a barrel. So it returned uh, back to where it started. So when price goes back up to P1, that's the price that the firm must accept. For the firms that survive uh, this period that are able to reduce their average total costs, are able to have uh, perhaps enough um, profit put aside to uh, cover this bad time, they survive. And as a result of them being able to survive and seeing a decrease in the number of firms that are competing against them, price eventually rises. And as price rises, these firms can increase the quantity supplied from point B back up to point A, and they're back at normal profit. So that's what this market structure illustrates. And again, if you look at the chart, price was trading at 50. It collapses because of the decrease in demand due to the COVID lockdown. And as a result of firms declaring bankruptcy um, and shutting down, they begin to um, leave the industry, the supply decreases, and slowly the price of oil rises for the surviving firms. So now that we've graphed this market structure, let's just review and analyze it as we would in a paper one exam. So as can be seen, we have a uh, two graphs, one for the industry, one for the firm. On the x-axis for both, we're measuring the quantity supply and demanded for petroleum. And on the y-axis for the industry, we're measuring price. And for the firm, we're measuring price, costs, and revenue on the y-axis. For the industry, we have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1 according to the law of demand and an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1 according to the law of supply. We'll also notice that with the firm, we have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal cost curve. And we have um, the S1 curve intersecting with the ATC curve at its lowest point. So in the industry where S1 equals D1, a free market equilibrium price is established at P1 and the quantity supplied and demanded is established at Q1. The industry sets the, the price that the firm must accept, which is P1, which is a perfectly elastic demand curve. You see that P1 equals to average revenue one, equal to marginal revenue one, equal to demand one, equal to marginal benefit. And assuming profit maximization where the firm produces where MR equals MC, here's MR, here's MC, so they're gonna produce at point A. And at point A, the firm establishes a quantity supplied at Q1. And we'll also notice at point A that the firm is productively efficient because they're producing at minimum ATC. And also we notice that they're producing normal profit because average revenue, AR, equals ATC. Then in February, March, uh, the COVID pandemic hits in the year 2020. Governments begin to mandate that people stay home. And as a result of people being locked home, it decreases their ability to drive their cars, drive to work. Uh, use public transportation, public buses, and so forth that all run on petroleum. So the global demand for petroleum decreases from D1 to D2. This establishes a new equilibrium where D2 equals S1 at point B, lowering the price for petroleum at P2 and decreasing the quantity supply and demanded to Q2. That sets the perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept at P2. P2 is equal to AR2, equal to MR2, equal to D2, equal to MB2. And as a result of the fall in price, the quantity supply decreases from Q1 to Q2. And in that process, firms are probably trying to reduce some resources, potentially, uh, since they're decreasing the quantity supply. Uh, at Q2, we notice that the average revenue is less than the average total costs. So the firm is generating a loss. So there are multiple firms within this industry that are generating a loss and are not able to further reduce their average total costs in the long run. And so they begin to shut down and exit the industry. Uh, many firms declaring chapter 11 bankruptcy. As that begins to happen, the supply of oil begins to decrease from S1 to S2 as these firms exit the industry. That establishes a new equilibrium where ST equals D2 at point C, reducing the quantity supply and demand it at, to Q3, but raising price back up to P1, which becomes the perfectly elastic price 
that the surviving firms will accept. The firms that were able to keep their costs down to be productively efficient, perhaps they had enough revenue or profit set aside um, to cover some of the losses, um, survived. And over time, because of the reduction in the uh, amount of competition in the industry, price rises and these surviving firms go back to normal profit. Price goes up to P1 and the quantity supply increases from Q2 to Q1. And at point A, average revenue equals ATC and the firm is generating normal profit. So that's what you would be writing in your analysis, the step-by-step -step explanation of these two graphs and explaining how a firm starting at normal profit can go to loss and in the long run gravitate back to normal profit. In your evaluation, you would like to, you should be mentioning productive and allocative efficiency. The industry in perfect competition is always allocatively efficient. Oop, I'll just make a note. Uh, since the supply curve equals marginal costs and demand curve equals marginal benefit, the industry, when it establishes these equilibriums at point A, point B, and point C, is allocatively efficient. In terms of the, uh, the firm, the firm is also allocatively efficient because here we see the supply curve equals MC and the demand curve equals MB. And as price rises or falls, and as the firm produces where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, it's also producing where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, so it's allocatively efficient at points A and at point B. What about productive efficiency? Productive efficiency is achieved at minimum ATC, which is basically where MC equals ATC, where they intersect, which is at point A. So at point A, when the firm is generating normal profit, it's also productively efficient because it's producing at the lowest average total cost. But when the price falls from P1 to P2 and the firm decreases the quantity supply to Q2 or point B, we know that the average costs have risen. They have gone up. So here it is not productively efficient. Productive inefficiencies are beginning to rise. All right, so that's basically it. We've graphed this model, we've analyzed it, and we've just highlighted in your evaluation uh, productive and allocative efficiency.